So Ping An, why should we look at this company? Because it has a super track record. It's a 20% plus compounder. So the IPO in 2004, and for, for the next 16 years until 2020, right, it was compounding at 20 over percent, be it like the shareholder equity or the dividends or even the return on equity, the earnings per share, everything is 20% or higher. Normally, when you see this kind of track record, right, if you look at the US big tech companies, you'll see the same thing. Alphabet, Meta, Microsoft, you, you, you put their chart, it's also the same. They can compound their returns at over 20% because they have a strong mode and they are very technology driven. So my belief is that Ping An is more than an insurance company. So because it is such a strong mode and such a, a high return company, right? The valuation is also not cheap. It usually trades at about two times uh, book value. So for insurance company, right? We look at book value because it's very asset driven. So later I, I'll tell you more about what is the assets and what are their investments. So we really like we value insurance companies like Great Eastern in the Singapore market or we look at banks like DBS, OCBC. Usually we look at book value because they use a lot of hard assets. So historically it trades at two times book value. Why? So example, if your book value is $10, one time, then you're paying one times book value and the company generates 10% return on equity. So $10 generating one, $10 of asset generating $1 of profits every year. So that's a 10% return. But if your company is such a high performer, it can generate 20% return on equity or higher. With $10 a set, right, it can generate $2 of earnings or 20% returns. So the market right, will value it higher. Because one times book value is too cheap already. One time book value, you, you can compound your money at 20%. It's too attractive. So Ping An usually trades at a premium to book value. So historically, right, it usually doesn't trade at a discount of book value. So you look at here, historically, it trades as low as one times book value to as high as 2.5 times book value. So you look at the past five year charts, right, it usually trades at about two times book value because it can generate 20% return on equity. So two times book value is what market deems as a fair value for such a great high quality company with such a 16 year, 15 year track record of growing earnings and dividends. But in recent times, right, we saw the China market crashing and now the country garden, they are forced to do national service, a lot of rumors, a lot of negative sentiments. So Ping An, right, has crashed from two times book value to 0 0.7 times book value. So in the first time in history, it's trading at discount to book value. First time in history, it's trading below book value. So is this danger or is this opportunity? So through my sharing today, right, you look at the entire business to judge whether it's a dinosaur or whether it's still, it can recover or not. So short term, definitely the fundamentals have been impacted. There's, there was a lot of short term negatives in their earnings. That's why the stock, stock has been sold down so heavily. So uh, for the past decade, right, you see that revenues grow steadily all the way up one. But in the recent year, like 2021, Earnings, revenues drop, earnings also drop or from 143 to 102. Then revenues also drop slightly. So we see that, hey, have the fundamentals deteriorate or is it a short term issue? So we have to investigate and dig into the fundamentals to find out. So one thing about Ping An, right, is that it is a dividend champion. Over the past two decades, it has track record of raising dividends per share. So you can see a steady uptrend. In fact, for the past 10 years, right, dividend has 10x from 23 cents to now $2.38. So it's a super dividend compounder. They keep paying you higher and higher dividends. So despite their earnings uh, taking a dip, they still pay higher dividends because their payout ratio is not high. In the past, they pay out about 30% of their earnings as dividends. Now, because uh, now in 2-1, they, they were paying 40%, but in the year 2-2, and the coming year, two, three, this year, most likely they'll be paying about 50% of their earnings as dividends. But I believe that they are still able to maintain same or higher dividends. Why? So we have to look at the fundamentals. So for Ping An, right, they are a huge, huge, huge company. So it's a Ping An group. So insurance is their main business where they started with. So it's under the life and the health. So that forms about 65% 
of their profits comes from this segment. But they also have the property and casualty misunderwriting. Then there's also traditional banking. There's asset management. There's also technology. So it, I'll cover each of these one by one uh, in the second half of my sharing. But li uh, life and health right? insurance basically is very simple. You're actually selling a put option. So people, they buy an insurance contract from you like 20 years or for their whole life. Every year, they will pay you a premium. You get the premium up front, right? Then you take the money you and invest it. You invest it already, right? The money keep growing and something adverse happens to the customer. As I'm gonna cancel la, or gonna bank by the car, pass away, then you take out from the fund to pay out the claim. Also, you are like a banker like that. So like 1 million people under you pay you premium or maybe only 1% of them have something adverse. Then you do the payout. Overall, you should make a profit uh, because the odds are with you when you price the insurance. So you're actually more of an asset manager. So Ping is actually the biggest asset manager in China. He managed 11.5 trillion of asset. 11.5 trillion eh, or RMB there. Eh. So in sing dollars, that's like uh, more than 2 trillion. Like even Temasek, GIC, MAS together, add together is just 1.5 trillion. So they are even bigger than, than Singapore in that sense, the, the uh, assets that they manage. So for their asset manager is divided into three groups. One is the, the insurance, they manage about 4 trillion. Then they have their traditional banking, they manage about 3.5 trillion. Then they have the asset management, which they manage another 4 trillion. So I'll talk about them uh, in the sec second part. So because they are such a huge asset manager, right? Investing is their livelihood. Do they invest well or not? So in 2018, oh, we saw that the government start to introduce the three rate lines. There's some tension in the property market. So Ping An went in to buy China Fortune Land, which is a bit related uh, to the government one. So they have the government backing to go into this deal to buy a one-fifth stake in China Fortune Land development. So in recent times, 2023, we are seeing that government is encouraging them to buy country garden. So investors see this news as very negative because this reminds them of 2018, this deal with Fortune Land. So they, they uh, paid 2 billion USD, or well, that's about uh, 14 billion of uh, Ch Chinese, uh, Chinese yuan. So that's a lot of money. So in fact, they continue to add into the, their stakes. And three years later, in 2021, they got hit. So I show you the chart. In 21, the earnings came down because they were hit by this bad investment. So Fortune Land turned sour and they had to do a write, write down in this position. So they invested about 18 billion yuan in stock and 36 billion yuan uh, in debt. So this is part of their 8 trillion investment portfolio. 4, billion is for, uh, 4 trillion is from insurance. 4 trillion is from asset management. Their banking 3.5 billion data I'll talk about is more of the house and car loans. So Pingai Insurance uh, for the first half of 2021 reported a 15% drop in profit. So this is where Pingai Insurance started the downfall. 21 and 22 earnings was very bad. So they had to take a almost 36 billion yuan uh, provision uh, due to the lower value of the developer. So they themselves they put in about 50 billion. 50 or 54 billion and they write down 36 billion so they write down almost 60 70 percent losses so that's very bad the most of the losses came from the equity position so in one eight they invest in the china fortune land was about 20 dollar level and it crashed more than 20 90 percent from 20 dollar down to less than two dollar so the equity almost totally wiped out then bonds still got some uh, residential value or re re residual value so investment is the livelihood of, of Ping An. And when their investment goes sour, it hurts their earnings. So the another major investment that they have right is in 2020, they bought into uh, HSBC. They raised their stake to 8%. They started buying, I think, five years ago, 2015 or something. They've been buying throughout the years and raised it to a 8% stake. And now they are HSBC's largest shareholder. So you can look at the chart here. So HSBC, right, is uh, basically in the Hong Kong market is the largest blue chip bank. So for them, right, about uh, 
35% of HSBC business is in London, 65% of their business in Asia. So in 2018, they bought a 5% stake, but the stock keep going down. So same as retail investor, price drop, buy more, buy more, buy more. So drop to $60, buy more, then <laughs> drop to $30, buy, 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 until no money, 8%, all in already. So HSBC has been very disappointing. Over the past decade, do this a 10, 10 year chart, uh, oh, Ping An in red color oh, has outperformed the Hansen index. But uh, the blue color HSBC underperforming Ping An and also underperforming the Hansen index. Very bad. HSBC was very poorly managed. So Ping An now wants HSBC to undersake and overhaul. That means restructure their business. So basically, they want to see a separate listing for their Hong Kong and Asia business. So uh, the Asia business right generates about 65% of their profits. So by spinning it off, right, it can unlock value for the shareholder. But uh, I don't think they're going to do so. Because recently this year, they report the results is very strong. So they're going to put the spin off on hold. So the funny thing is that it, Back in 2004, right, when uh, Ping An just began, uh, HSBC was the major investor of Ping An. It gave the seed capital for it to grow in, in China. Because HSBC was actually a, a UK, a British bank. And they expanded into Asia, they based uh, in Hong Kong and also in London. <clears throat> and when uh, Ping An grew an IPO, right, they actually sold off their stake of the 15.6% to cash out. But they didn't expect Ping An to grow, to become bigger than them. And now Ping An take back a stake in HSBC. So times have changed. So not only Fortune Land, the property business is disappointing. Their investment in HSBC also has been disappointing. And last year in 2022, they continue to do mega deals. So this is also in the direction of the state. So. Ping An, right, their largest shareholder is actually the CCP. La, a lot, but the CCP don't own a direct stake. It's true. Those state-owned uh, prov uh, provinces and state-owned funds together, they own a sizable stake in Ping An. So Ping An sometimes will be asked by the state la, to look at certain deals. Uh, because Ping An is the one, because they're managing the, so much money, 11.5 trillion. They have the capital to do the buyout of all these huge conglomerates. So founder group or oh, it's actually a state-owned conglomerate or oh, they're actually founded by the Peking University or oh, Beijing Tashui La. So they were very poorly run and they actually went into bankruptcy. So it became insolvent. More debt than they, oh, that they are able to service their interests because they're not so profitable. But they own a lot of assets. So Ping An was asked to do national service again. So they uh, are to buy this company. So the deal is that Ping An will acquire 50 to 70% stake of the new founder group uh, or spending about uh, 37 to 50 billion. In the end, they took, I think, a 60% stake, uh, the, the finalized one. So what are the assets? So this uh, uh, company, right, this founder group, right, they have a lot of hard assets. Example, they have the Peking University International Hospital. So they own a lot of hospital assets, a lot of bed space. They also have a founder security. So it is a good fit for Ping An to acquire because there are some synergies. Like Ping An is, is in insurance and they do a lot of business with the hospital. So they also have like IT, which is the PCB, which is the circuit board, hardware kind of uh, manufacturing. They also have the education or because they themselves is a university. So. This deal, right, uh, they do it because there's some synergy between the offline and online. They bring in the hard assets, like hospital, uh, payment, uh, then uh, like the securities brokerage. Uh. So Ping An can digitalize uh, uh, all these businesses. So it's already a done deal. So you, you'll see over the next few years, what is the performance of this investment? So for Ping An, right, over the past five years, we look at their earnings or their, their track record. Actually, they continue to grow strongly, even in present, uh, in last year, year 2-2. So you look at the number of internet users 
from 400 over million, right? They've grown to almost 700 million. So the entire China population is 1.4 billion. So half of the China population is the Ping An customer. And their operating profit, that means their day-to-day -day business from all the different units, right? The profits continue to grow, like 112 uh, uh, million, right? Also, so this is like 112 billion. It grew to almost 150 billion. So profits continue to be on the uptrend. But underlying, we as a shareholder, is the earnings per share. What is the earnings attributed to us? So the general day-to-day -day business generates a lot of profit. But because their investment, like Fortune Land, HSBC have not been doing well. They actually drag down the earnings. You see, profit attributed to shareholders. For in uh two two uh, and two zero, it peaked at one four three billion, but Fortune Land dragged the two one earnings down to one o one. Then HSBC dragged the two two earnings uh to eighty three uh, billion. So will the uh, uh this founder group? drag the earnings in 2023. Uh, every year, they, they write down their investment, take losses. So is this a short-term problem or is this a, a long-term issue? So if we buy Ping An, right, we are looking at all the underlying business, whether got fundamentals or not. Yeah, so I'll go through all their businesses uh, with you all so that you can understand what is Ping An, the underlying businesses, all about. Uh, so D Enterprise, th thanks for your tips. Hua la, thanks for the 100 plus. NT Pulse, I Google bar to check accordingly. GMV increased 2%. JD GMV increased 10%. Is it wow, the Google part? So smart. La. I look at the Jeffries, la, the independent third party research, the news. They say that Alibaba, JD, all these are GMV increased about 5% for the 1111. But the company themselves, they don't release the results. So third party is saying average is about 5%. So I think our numbers is about there. Lor. But uh, GMD is like revenue growth. So the question is whether there's earnings growth or not. Can they sell the products uh, profitably or not? So Chong Costa, welcome, welcome. Uh, Shun Chai, China, G Guomei. Guomei. Yeah, Guomei is actually an uh, electronics player. It went bankrupt. So they are competitor against JD. JD, about 50% of their revenues is from electronics. So it's good. Guomei go bankrupt is good news for JD. J J JD... Uh, the competitor Gigi, yeah. Wow, oh, Tokoyomi looking for Ivy Lim, ah. Wow, oh, everybody miss her, yeah. The GMV, I think you don't be too concerned, ah. Just wait for the JD and Alibaba the results. What is the three Q results? Then the management call all this. Uh, I will go through, ah. If anything important, I'll highlight to you. All. Don't worry. UCC Black Coffee. Oh, most welcome, most welcome. Wow, today the viewers quite high. Usually deep dive. The, the, the number of live viewers is quite less. So I think a lot of you are interested on the Ping An insurance. So this deep dive is sponsored by Ivy Lim and Vivian Ng. Well, last week, they tip master a lot. Yeah, so second part I'll talk about is their business units. So for 2022, right, net profit actually dropped by 17.6%. So mostly due to their investment portfolio. But their operating profit actually helped out. Helped out. Yeah, operating profit actually maintained. So we'll go through all the business units. So for <clears throat> Ping An, right, they sell a lot of products like life insurance, car insurance, home insurance. Then they do retail banking, your car loan, house loan. They also do like securities, whether you want to trade stocks, you want to buy funds, they manage your wealth also. So they have so many business units. So like I mentioned that the population, right, of 1.4 billion, half of the population are already the Ping An customers. So it's hard for them to grow their user base. They already have, their user base already matured already. So where they get the growth, the growth is actually cross-selling of products. Because, uh, example, if someone already buy a, a car insurance from you, uh, so you ask them, hey, do you need the car loan? Do you need housing loan? Or do you need a credit card? So you can upsell a lot of services. So the number of uh, consumers that are use, holding multiple contracts with different subsidiaries, continues to increase so it's like selling multiple products to the same customer base so for ping an right you'll notice that 75 percent of their customers are actually middle class and above they are not so suited for the very low income one the very low income one actually they go to the rural banks all this ping an they are more focused on is that the tier one and tier two cities 
Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, all this, those who have more income, more spending power, because they are the ones that can <clears throat> spend thousands of dollars to buy those uh, premium, those uh, insur insurance policies. So the life and the health, uh, the insurance business is their biggest cash count. So the profits you can see that is growing very steady, operating profits. Well, from 71 billion, every year it grows higher. Now it's 112 billion. So it generates a point. But you notice that the new business value is actually on a decline. New business value means new customer that sign that 20 years uh, investment link policy with you. Actually, they are getting less policies. Why? Because over the past three years, like 2021 and 22, we were facing the lockdowns. So when uh, the new business value declined, right, due to a loss of offline activities, because offline, right, the agent cannot go to the customer house, uh, or meet the customer at McDonald's, Starbucks, uh, to brainwash them, uh, to buy the insurance. For me, right, I hate insurance agents. I find them, they are like a pest. I go to MRT station, they ask me, I want to sit down, uh, do a survey, uh, or give me free gift, uh, want to sell me insurance. Uh, I think they are a waste of time. So I hate insurance agents. So I, I I hate selling insurance, but I like to be an insurance company because it's like MLM like that. Or well, you earn a it's a very profitable business. Example, someone buy a investment link policy for you. Then every, every year or every month they have to pay a premium, and they'll pay the premium for twenty years. Every time they pay the premium, you get a five percent commission. Every every year they put ten thousand, you get five hundred. So it's it's once you they signed. The policy with you, you earn their money for 20 years. Well, so that's the amazing business of insurance. That's why I like to be the insurance in the insurance business. And you are the banker. Or it's like a put option, like, just like Berkshire had away. You collect all the premium, then you manage it. Then you do the payout. The odds, you can structure it in your favor. But the new business uh, value actually dropped by 24% due to uh, the, the lockdown continuing over the past three years but how they increase the profit also like i mentioned the past customer still continue to give you income because that contract that insurance is all long term multi-decade one so your new business volume actually dropped by 26 percent you get less contracts coming in but in order to sh show higher profitability they actually lay off the agents they cut the agents by 40 percent so insurance are is a in a very evil business, to be honest. When times are no good, you just fire off the insurance agents. You set them a target. They cannot hit the target, then you kick them out. It's a very cruel business. But in order to make money in the stock market, you must be a cruel businessman. You must be a cruel investor. If you're too soft-hearted, you cannot make money. And you must invest in evil business to generate extraordinary returns. So they lay off 40% of their agents, almost half their agents. Also, a lot of people in the, that you see PDPD or social media, a lot of people bad mouth the Ping An, say that it's an evil corporation. When times are bad, they, they lay off so many workers and so many workers uh, lost their, their jobs. So you, the uh, insurance industry is like that one. Sometimes you get the fresh grad to come in, right? They just leech their network only. The fresh grad come in, you train them for three months, then they sell insurance to their friends, to their families. Then after two years, right, they suck dry all their close people, right? Then they, they have no more growth already. Then they cannot hit target. Then you kick them out. Then you hire another new batch of fresh grad. So for insurance, right, the turnover rate is very high. Like you, you recruit someone, right, the chances of them surviving past the first two years, right, is maybe 10% only. 90% of insurance agents quit within the first two years. Usually they, they suck dry all their friends and relatives, right. Then the third year, they cannot hit target already. They go to roadshow, they go and hunt. They are unable to hunt, then, then they die off. So turnover is very high. So when you get so many customers, right, the customers sign the policy, you get all the premium upfront. So the insurance business, right, is how you manage the, the all these premiums, how you invest it. Like for Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, he's a legend. Or they, he said that the float is the most amazing thing because he get the money upfront, he can invest it and it's is that borrowing money for zero interest can invest it and generate a high return so the float is one is the one that uh, and and uh enables berkshire Hathaway to grow so fast same for ping an because they are managing a four trillion portfolio and for their strategy right 80 percent of it is put into fixed income 
and 20% is in stocks and bonds. So you can see like bond investment here is like 50%. So mostly is the investment grade bonds. Like There's also a cash term deposit together is like 8 or 9% to earn uh, some interest. So the more risky part is below, that like equity part, like stocks, like equity funds, all this. Yeah, so basically 80% is for fixed income, interest. 20% is for a bit for growth and dividends. So what is their target? Their target uh, is not like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, his returns is very high. Almost 20, he compounded the Berkshire Hathaway portfolio at about 20%. Because he's mostly in equity. Warren Buffett doesn't really buy bonds, but his cash, he'll park in the US treasuries. Uh. For uh, Ping An, right? Because they don't have a Warren Buffett. So they manage it professionally and they take a very low risk approach actually. So their target is just 5% uh, long-term return. So over the past 10 years, their returns has been about 5.3%. Uh, the average comprehensive return, 5.3%, 5.5%, slightly above their target. But the, for the past two years, it's very bad. It's 2.5% uh, in last year, 2 2 and the year before was 4%. They underperformed. That's why the net profit uh, got hit. So they're using what we call a barbell approach. So barbell is the one that you go to the gym, you know, a long metal bar, then you do the weightlifting at the two side, it's very heavy. So 80% is in bonds or that you can collect your the fixed income or maybe a 5% interest and your principal, principal is very secure. You don't want to face any loss of principal. The investment strategy is that they don't want to lose their principal. Then the 20%, the two tail end, right, the, the barbell, right, the 20%, right, the two heavyweight is stocks and property. And this is where they make the mistake. And this is where they lost a lot of money. So the question here is, master, ah, now the China property crisis, ah, wow, Ping An insurance, a lot of property exposure not, will explode and go bankrupt or not. So they are in their annual report, you'll see that their exposure to real estate investment for their insurance portfolio is 4.7%. So that's one out of 20 only, very small percentage. So this con consists of a few things like physical property. So the physical property that hold in their portfolio, right, is like office and shopping malls and it's there to collect the rental. They also have equity type, or which is like uh, REITs la, and also like a property counter. And of this equity investment, right, 70%, is collecting rents and collecting uh, dividends. And then the balance is actually bonds or but investment grade property counters that pay interest uh, on their bonds. So their property exposure is actually very small, but that small percentage that go wrong, right? like you see Fortune Land, down 90%, that really hurt the portfolio. So you can see uh, their life and health investment income was under pressure due to the volatile capital market. So in 2-1, right? their impairment on investment asset. So this one is basically the, the fortune land. So this one dragged their profits down. Their investment yield 4%. So this is uh, below uh, the average. Then in 2-2, two, two, right? Realized and unrealized gains. These are traded securities. Like their stake in HSBC, uh, uh, they have an 8% stake. So that one is traded one. But this is unrealized losses because the stock price crash uh, is now trading at the lows. So the paper losses, they have to mark to market. So a lot of their investment portfolio, like you can see the China market last year, this year, the past two years, is trading lower and lower. Every year breaking new lows. Hopefully next year, it can recover. So this one is basically investing. There will be good times and there will be bad times. So now they have a lot of unrealized gains. So they are, they are sitting a lot of paper losses. So if you invest in Ping your question will be, what is the outlook for 2023? Will they have more paper losses or will they reverse and these losses will become gains? So for myself, right, I'm bullish. I think uh, 2024 next year will, will, will be a bullish year. Then for 2023, right, this year, right, they reported 9-month uh, results. 9-month results so far, right, their revenues are up about 5%. The profits is down about 5%. So this year is actually quite stable, I, I believe, too. But... Uh, I don't have the details for all this. So only the next quarter when they report the Q4 already, I read through the annual report, then I'll update you all again on the Ping An results. 
for the full year 2023 early of next year then after that we will look at the outlook what is the outlook for 2024 okay so today is basically on the 2022 data was i don't have the comprehensive data for 2023 their annual report is not out yet for 2023 they still got one more quarter to go so there's also the p the second biggest business is actually the p as property and casualty so this is like underwriting so like your, your like your car insurance your home insurance or like say your company like the natural disaster insurance or anything so basically like i mentioned uh, is like a put option like that it's also selling put option and their biggest uh premium right comes from the auto insurance it means insuring of the car because in china right uh like tell you all they target those middle income and above most of their customers are middle income and a lot of them they are car owners and homeowners so there's a lot of synergy to sell uh this car insurance so this one actually saw positive growth so for the year two two right the premiums grow by 10 percent but we saw on the news right actually recently a lot of natural disasters actually the past two years due to climate change suddenly it's flooding suddenly it's super hot so all these natural disasters they cause a lot of damages to like building and also to car but for building they, they don't do that much insurance uh. mostly they, they target is the consumers so car insurance they get hurt a lot so like in example like this the picture is from Hubei, Henan there so flood then a lot of car get damages so they will do insurance claim then they have to do the payout so so that hurts their uh income so their premium income up by 10 percent but their as claim expenses also up uh 10 percent due to all these natural disasters all this therefore their uh their net profit came down by half also dragged by their investment income so their investment portfolio underperformed the U only came in at 2.8 percent so you will notice that a lot of their business unit right the drag came down from their investment asset their investment is the one that is dragging them down not their claims so ping is really not so affected by all these natural disaster it's more affected by the investment portfolio so the net profit for this unit dropped by almost half also that's 45 percent decline and that's quite severe then for their third unit is the traditional banking unit so the banking business is very simple it's basically like dbs like that people deposit money you take the money then you lend it out make a higher return and you earn from the spread so revenues up 6.2 percent profits increased by 23 percent growing very strongly and one thing is that uh that non-performing loan is very low just one percent so for this industry right mpl can be between it's usually about 1.5 two percent that's the average so their non-performing loan is very healthy below one percent why their mpl is so good is due to that technology how uh they assess the risk all this which i'll talk about the technology in the last part so for them right it's a very cash cow business and it's very safe you look at their track record of their net profit or from 24 billion every year it grows steadily now it's uh, 45 billion plus this is actually a very low risk business people come to the ping an bank they put their deposit then you consolidate the deposit then you slowly give out loan example they want to buy a house you give them housing loan you want to buy a car you give them car loan and usually the default rate for housing and car loan is very low you can you can see just uh one percent or less only or then for them right because they manage so much deposit right their deposit is huge it's almost 3.5 trillion asset under management but for this right they are not using it to do any investment right? it's basically loan so they get deposit money and then they lend it out as simple as that so it's a very simple business uh to to understand so there are four business that they have right is asset management so asset management right is like your ping an securities trading stocks trading bonds and funds <clears throat> then they have the ping an asset management also they are also an asset manager they sell etf they sell funds and these funds right they they themselves they also invest in their own funds and hold a significant stake in fact in the recent market decline ping an asset management and like citic citic or is also one of the major asset managers all these asset managers they are encouraged to buy into their own funds to push up the, the stock market and to defend the stock market so they, they eat their own cooking and uh the not net profits right 
have declined sharply because of the capital market side. Last year, 2-2 and this year, the market has been very bad. That's why the, the net profits dropped sharply. So for the security business, right, oh, <clears throat> you can see that their revenues actually down 14.5%. The business declined because there's, the stock market is weak. Uh, they don't get so much IPO. So when there's an IPO, you have to do it. You can get underwriting fees. You get a commission for listing the company. And there's less trading activities uh, because it's a bear market. But net profit is up 16%. Why? Because they do a lot of cost cutting. So when times are bad, they lay off workers and they try to be more asset like. They digitalize or use AI uh, to replace those workers. That's why net profit increase. And that, that's the trend that you will see. They become more and more effective and using less workers. So for Ping An Asset Management, they are super huge. So uh, they, they, they manage like stocks, bonds, ETF, mutual funds. They hold more than uh, 4 trillion in assets. And you see the asset actually increased despite the weak stock market. So this is actually a very sticky one. So you might the stock uh, value that you, uh, you manage can be less. But when stocks go down, people buy a lot of bonds. So then you are offset. So stocks, bonds, usually when stocks are not doing well, bonds do well. When bonds not doing well, stocks do well. So overall, your asset under management is very stable and you get a lot of recurring income. Basically, in the US, you have BlackRock. But in the China environment, you have Ping An Asset Management. They're managing $4 trillion of asset. And a lot of these funds that they own, right? Or they, they themselves have a stake in it. And they use these funds to purchase example the HSBC, the Fortune Land, and they did not do well. The, their funds actually underperformed over the past few years due to their exposure to the banking and to the property sector. So for Ping An, right, they are so huge. They have so many subsidiaries, like 20 over subsidiaries, and a lot of them is actually in technology. So Ping An is more than a traditional business. It has a lot of technology uh, businesses. Yeah, so the last part I'll talk about is their uh, technology businesses. Yeah. Yeah, so let me cover uh, the technology business that I come to answer all your questions. So feel free to ask me any questions about Ping An. So I've researched Ping An over the past few years. Uh, but I myself, I, I never buy uh, because I, I went into the e-commerce players like Alibaba and JD because I feel that they are more value for money. But now Ping An is so cheap. Uh, so Ping An is now my top pick for 2024. So in 21, my top pick was Alibaba. I went all in and I cannot burn. So I have nothing to hide. I, sometimes you make money, sometimes you lose money. But at heart, I'm a value investor. And my track record is pre-Alibaba. I managed to compound my money at more than 20%. So I believe that my investing style works. Just that I was too reckless on uh, Alibaba. Then in 2-2, I recommended Alphabet, Meta, and Netflix. I myself, I put money on Alphabet and Meta and I make 40% return. I got show to you all. All my Substack readers will know. But I didn't buy Netflix uh, because I don't have enough bullet. So this year is the same. This year, I don't have enough bullet. I cannot buy Ping An now. But I bought into JD and SE. So next year, we shall see the results whether my JD and SE what or not. Also, uh, Ping An is now my new pick. Uh, and not only is it strong in dividends, it also has a lot of value in it. So JD uh, and Alibaba, they are technology company. So people might say, Master, uh, Ping An is dinosaur company. So is it really dinosaur? What technology do they have? So I will compare them against like Singapore banks, like DBS, OCBC, Great Eastern. What do they have? I don't know. So far, I use their product like DBS. I'm not a customer of OCBC. La. OCBC, I only use their IOCBC, their trading platform, but nothing special. So, in fact, now I don't use IOCBC. I use Tiger, Mumu, Webu, all those discount brokers. DBS, I use PayLah, PayNow. What else you tell me DBS, the technology is strong at? I don't know. But let me tell you what technology Ping An has. So, Ping An, right, they are very number one for the number of patents, be it in fintech and digital health health tech basically health tech so in the year 20 alone right they submitted 31,000 patents eh? so they are very aggressive to go into fintech and health tech so uh for them right it's basically break up into five areas that they focus their technology on uh, one is the auto teacher and financial services xinrong and the uh, real estate fantasy 
and healthcare 啦，医疗 and the smart city 知知识城市。然后 ，so I'll explain to you all one by one 哦 of all these segment. So the most powerful one right is actually fintech. So they own this uh company called One Connect. It's a listed company. So basically, they sell the software that other banks and uh insurance those financial institutions. Need to use, so you can see that national banks are then city commercial banks are and insurance companies. So hundreds of all these or uh, banks and uh, institutions they use the Ping An soft software and they earn a royalty, they earn a fee from them, and this is their competitive advantage. But they are the technology leader. But banking is huge. You are processing so much data. You must use a trustable and a very high quality software. So for their one connect uh financial technology right, they provide digital banking software. They also have the digital the insurance software. They also have the Gamma platform, which is like how to manage the cloud, manage the data, manage the back office. So for Ping An right, they actually evolve. So the traditional finance right is that your bank Ping An insurance and your Ping An bank. So it's like your DBS, your Great Eastern, your OCBC. That's the one point zero finance. So your two point zero version is like your pay now, pay now, or your payment system. Then they also and your the stock stock trading, your open market system. So like the Lufex is actually for people to trade their financial products, be their funds or peer to peer lending or co corporate debt or 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 short term debt. All this, yeah. So now level three right is like the open platform. That means the enterprise system, the the or the cloud. The other financial institutions that they use, so example like insurance, banking, and investment club. So all these are the software that like example, uh, you you are like an Indonesia bank or a Malaysia bank. You want to upgrade your system. You want to digitalize, move into the club. So you might engage Ping An to use their this platform. So it's under SaaS, ah, service, or software as a service, or a platform. Also, you digitalize. So nowadays, banks are digitalizing very rapidly already. Why you need to digitalize so that you can be more efficient? Gone are the days you do the paperwork already. Example: last time you go to the bank, right? You want to sign up credit card. You maybe you need to fill up a form. Nowadays, you sign up credit card. Do you fill up a form? No. You just go to the DBS app. Then you maybe your data, right? You just log into your SingPass. It captures all your data. You don't even fill in anything. You just use your through online. You can apply. They collect all your data one shot. Then you open the account. Just a few minutes can already. Everything digitalized. Gone are the days of uh filling up for forms already. So through their software, right? They can monitor like the sales channel. Uh, how many people sign up? Then your branch, or how your sales staff? How many people they engage? What products they are selling? Then your social media, your telemarketing. How you? Connect with the customer, like cu customer, uh, service. Example, right? For Ping An, right? I go through their interviews, right? So, example, you are a customer, or you have outstanding uh credit card that is due. So in the past, right? Maybe the person will call you, or say, oh, you have how how many uh your credit card is due, or they will send you a letter, or this all is a human uh need to do. Or example, you call the the customer service that or say. Credit card? Why you charge me a yearly fee? I want to waive off the two hundred dollar yearly fee. Nowadays, right in China, right all this, right is you don't longer speak to a human. It's an AI that do all this so called customer service and telemarketing. So when your credit card is due or you have outstanding amount, the AI will call them and remind the customer to make payment. And you want to call in to ask about your credit card to cancel your credit card is also AI is the one you don't engage a human. So. Their for their cost right, eighty percent of their cost right is all done by the robot already. Only twenty percent, those that is more complicated, then it is done by a human. So another thing is that, for example, insurance. So insurance right, uh, that making the claims all this, that you processing a lot of claims, then which hospital, and how to link to the cost hospital back office all this, they have the network. To do all the claims and what is your policy? So in the past, right, what you do a claim, right, you still need to call your agent. Your agent go and check. Then call bank. You see what what is your coverage? Your coverage is how much? Everything. So a lot of manual work. But now, right, they just go open their tablet, 
they look at your customer profile, you just tap in, all your data is there already and it's linked to the hospital. Whether you, you can make the insurance claim or not, you can do, then your car, whether how much your car is damaged, what's the coverage, where to send to, everything. All is within the system already. So example of some functions, example you want to do a loan. In the past, you do a loan, you must go down to the branch, then you fill out a form. What is your salary? What is your occupation? What is your history? All this. But now, all is digitalized. In a few minutes, you don't even need to go to the branch. You just take out your uh, your app. Then the app will scan through your face, identify you, know who you are. Then they will look at your credit score, your history. Immediately, within a few minutes, they will tell you how much unsecured borrowing you can borrow. And not only that, because their AI, their big data is so accurate, the percentage of bad loans is very low, just about 2% only. So the bad loan is very low, it's very effective, and there's zero human interaction. So nowadays, everything is digitalized, be it loan or be it uh, insurance. Then I mentioned insurance that you go into a car accident. So when you go to a car accident, what you do, you do usually you have to make a call. Or tell them, uh, you tell your insurance company that oh, you just have a car accident, send someone down to take your car to the workshop to repair, then you can claim for your insurance or what, or, or you call your agent. But now this different, you just your car get as you just take picture of your car and you take picture of the counterparty, so they know the car plate number immediately. They tell you what to do, where to send to, how much you can claim, and eighty nine percent of the claim the same day. They give you the payment already. So, example, your payment is you. Uh, they feel that this damage, how much you are awarded, then you own self take the amount to go and do your repair. So everything digitalized already. So that's how powerful the AI is. Then when it comes to the car sale or even home sale, also uh, for them right, they have an app that connect between. It's basically like Alibaba is connect between the merchant and the consumer. So same thing, but they are selling is car. Be it a second-hand car, a new car, or doing the car rental. You just go to their auto home app, then you can do it already. So it's all online. And this has a lot of synergy with their traditional business. So if people buy the car from the online, right, or they go to the showroom, what they need, right, for example, they look at this car, or they say, hey, not bad, I want to buy a Mercedes. Then they say, hey, where's the nearest showroom that I can go in to book a test drive? Also, they confirm they want to buy already, they buy from the app, they get a discount. Then, are they going to take a loan, like 20% down, 80% loan? So they can use the Ping An loan, they give them a preferential rate if they get it from the app. Or, and you get the car already, you pay already, you receive the car, what you need, you need insurance. Then they can upsell you insurance. And also, post uh, owning the car, right, you need servicing, maintenance. So there's a lot of synergies in that sense. So they provide the whole ecosystem through their app. Then uh, another app that they are very strong at is the Ping An Good, Good Doctor. So their competitor is Alibaba and JD. So they JD Health and Alibaba Health and Ping An Good Doctor, they are all listed companies. So Ping An Good Doctor is actually the pioneer. They actually lead. Then Alibaba and JD, they copy it and they uh, became successful also. So JD and Alibaba, their advantage is that uh, they have the delivery of the medicine. So Ali Health and JD Health boom during the COVID. Because COVID at time, right, people don't dare to go out. So they want the medicine delivered to them. So for all this health app, right, these three of them, they are the market leader. So during COVID uh, time, during the lockdown, right, people use this app or like, like to teleconsult with the doctor and to get the medicine. So uh, for their teleconsultant, right, nowadays in China, right, when you are sick and you use the teleconsultant, right, 80% of the consultation, like 10 consultations, eight of them right, is done by the AI. You don't even see the doctor. Because when you when you having healthcare service, right, the most expensive part is actually the doctor. Because the doctor is so well trained, so educated. The consultation fee is the highest. When you buy them, when you go to the public clinic, uh, then maybe you will spend like $60 for a consultation and get the medicine. Maybe $50 is for consultation, $10 is just for the medicine. So this part actually, they do a lot of cost saving. Because 80% of it, you just use the AI robot. The AI robot, they charge you very less. So the AI robot, right, will just ask you questions. Like, are you coughing? Are you sneezing? What is your temperature? 
check your temperature with the thermometer now. So for a very uh, no, very like common disease, right, the AI will give you an accurate answer whether you are COVID, whether you are cough or flu, whether you are diarrhea or not. So something that's more complicated, then they'll refer you to the specialist, which is the 20% uh, of the consultation. So this is actually very useful. And through the app, right, you can connect to all the different doctors digitally for teleconsultation. So you can see uh, <clears throat> that the app is here. So the model has changed already. And Singapore, we are moving towards that direction also, teleconsultation. So China is the one that pioneer this. So gone are the days that you go to the clinic to get MC. You get your MC online instead. So easier to gain the MC lah. You just, you can cheat the bot lah. You just tell the bot, you know, feeling how then the, the bot will give you the MC. Maybe you get MC, then you need to see the physical doctor lah. But you use the robot, uh, they, they just give you the medicine. So another thing with the Pian doctor, right, is they tie very well with corporations like, example, like uh, Singtel lah, SIA lah, these bullshit companies, right, Usually they will sign a package. So I used to uh, work under a blue company, right? Then I'm insured under like Great Eastern. So a lot of cleaners, they, they have the Great Eastern logo, right? you can go in, you can see the doctor for free. Everything is can claim and can be reimbursed. So the same thing, a lot of corporations, right? They will buy the health insurance for all their workers. They sign a corporate package with Ping An. So through the app, right? Uh, your employee just download the Ping An app. They know that which clinic is under Ping An. They can go in and see for free because it will be reimbursed by the company. Then the company will have like a corporate health dashboard. Like who, how many of them, what is their health condition? Are they diabetic? Uh, how often they are sick? Whether they got Chao Geng or not, those kind of things. They also have that the one-stop uh, healthcare terminal uh, where you can get, uh, don't, don't have to wait. You just do your uh, consultation already. Then you just, uh, in, inside there you can do the video teleconsultation and can immediately dispense the medicine like vending machine like that they dispense the general medicine to you yeah so the last part right of their uh, technology is the uh, uh, smart city what is smart city smart city is basically Palantir so Palantir they, what they do right is that they win a lot of government contracts and they have very sexy name called Gotham so Gotham is from the Batman uh, but actually they are selling uh, software to the government and they very customize the software for the government. But for Ping An, they don't use any sexy name. Uh. They just call it the Ping An uh, uh, Liao, which is a smart healthcare. Basically, it's to uh, do the business from the government, right? So for their uh, smart uh, city business unit, right, you can see that they provide the government with a lot of help, like how to manage uh, their, their city, like the power consumption, uh, like the water pipe, electricity, how you want to plan it, do the urban planning, where to build your hospital, where to build your fire station, where to build your police center. You need to collect the data then to optimize your urban planning. But a big portion of it where they are strong is actually the healthcare solutions. At the hospital, hospital you know like, like Singapore you hospital, the waiting time can be a few hours. How to optimize your hospital, the wait time, the traffic, the, the bed, the bed space, all this is all through big data and through the software. So some of the examples that they partner with, so mostly the target is the tier one cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen. So this one is the Shenzhen government. So like how to manage the, the traffic. So in China, they have a lot of those, those the camera, everywhere is the camera. So if, if there's a collusion, what is involved, how much manpower to send, uh, how to do an extraction of the vehicle or illegal parking, how to do the summon, uh, how to resolve the situation, all through the monitoring and all through the AI. So they also have the uh, software that they do for the government, also the Shenzhen government uh, to manage the pollution, like regularly uh, take testing at the river and asking those uh, industrial manufacturers to submit data on a daily basis to control the pollution. So in last time when I go to Beijing, right, I go there, right, wow, the whole sky all grey color one. It's so cloudy, so dusty. I think that was like eight years ago. But nowadays, I see the tier one cities, I see the uh, YouTubers, BDPD. Wow, now the situation changed a lot already. The pollution is all in control. All the tier one city, you can you can now see the sky already. So they also help the government do that. So, but Palantir is doing the same thing. 
but lender is also do this kind of the same contract one. Yeah, but then people don't know about uh, people know Palantir but they don't know about Ping An uh, Smart City. So they also have like help the government do the app. So for example, like Singapore, right? Singapore, we have our own government tech unit. Lah. We, we don't outsource it. We have our own uh, government tech unit that do all this. So for example, like the SingPass or the Sing Health. Also, all this app, we own self develop. But for uh, Ping An, right, they actually help the local government uh, develop all this app so that you can like book your appointment to the hospital, look at the public transport, what's, what's the timing, or look at the government service, the community service, or during COVID period, or like what is your, your, your health status, all this. Yeah, so they actually provide the, the, uh, the software for the government also. So at the end of the day, through my sharing, you ask yourself, oh, what you think of Ping An? Is it a dinosaur company? If you think that Ping An is a dinosaur company, like DBS, OCBC, Great Eastern, or then you don't touch. Yeah, or, or you, you think that, oh, uh, DBS and OCBC is better because it's in Singapore, you understand their business, then you go ahead. So my view, right, is that uh, <clears throat> DBS, OCBC, I repeat many times for you, their income comes from two portions, interest and non-interest. The interest business that I just now shared with you, the Ping An Bank, will always be a cash cow. Because it's very simple. You collect the depositor money, then you take the depositor money, you do the housing loan, you do the car loan. So Shopee, Grab, all this, they cannot steal the business because people buy the condo, they're not going to take a $2 million loan from Shopee, they're not going to take a $2 million loan from Grab. They still go to DPS, OCBC because they want to go to or even Ping An Bank because someone that's reputable. So that it will be the core business. But the non-interest income, like payment, uh, credit card, insurance, uh, investing, buy now, pay later, all this kind of non-interest business, right, will be taken away by the digital banks. And I think Ping An, the advantage is that they are the digital bank. They are the one disrupting uh, all this. Like I tell you, the insurance claim, you just take picture, you just, then the app will tell you how much is your reimbursement. Everything is done for you. You do the loan, everything is automated. Whereas DBS, OCBC, you go and take a loan. They're still doing the same old thing. Ask you to fill up a form, then it's like four times your salary, those kind of things. They are not usually using the AI. So my, my belief is that uh, FinTech will disrupt uh, uh, these non-interest income businesses. So I think DBS, OCBC, they don't have the technology capabilities. That's why I will not invest in DBS and OCBC. But you invest in them, I won't fault you. But just that you won't see any growth. Their earnings have peaked already. You buy them, you collect the 5-6% dividend. That's your upside. For Ping An, I believe the upside uh, is that they will continue to have growth. So Ping An this year is all the way down. <coughs> From $60 level, it's down to $36 uh, level. Uh. So it's down by almost half uh, this year. Less than half, uh, maybe 40%. Uh due to all the negative uh, news. So valuation-wise, is super cheap. It's trading at 6.4 times earnings. 30% uh, discount to book value. More than 7% dividend. So for me, it's an easy buy. Uh. Why I want to pay 1.5 times book value for DBS? Where I can buy Ping An at 0 0.7 times book value. And DBS is a dinosaur. Ping An is a robo dinosaur. It has the dinosaur business insurance and banking but it has the technology business for at present time right the technology business only contributes like five six percent of their earnings but five years ten years later the technology business will be contributing much more maybe 20 percent of the earnings will come from technology but it's the technology business that has a lot of synergies like example you want to buy a car you use their the app then through the app right they'll link you to the ping insurance or to buy the insurance for your car, the Ping An Bank, to get a house loan. So you, you see all the synergies through the technology. It combines all the subsidiary together. So I think Ping An will continue to dominate. And also, it's very clear that why I will buy Ping An and not buy the six China Big Six banks. Even to buy the Big Six banks, right? The ICBC, CCB, uh, BOC, ABC, right? Then you go for the ETF, 3143. So you, you buy a whole ETF, you collect a dividend, you because you don't know what, uh, what is the risk of picking an individual bank. You can only pick an individual bank like 
only that you have done a deep dive like what I share with you today. I dare to pick Ping An because I've done my homework. I really understand the business.